Connor, I'll give you credit where credit is due. First things first, you're the first athlete I've ever interviewed that has dressed better than me. I just want that, I just want that on the record, okay? So congratulations on that. But I got to ask you this question. As we sit here right now, just days removed from your, third, your trilogy with Dustin Poirier, why are you here? Why are you here considering all that you've accomplished in your life and in your career? Why are you here for this fight? I love the thrill of it, Steven. I love it all. I love the fight. I love the business about it. I love everything about it. People ask me that all the time. Why am I here? I'm, you know, am I too accomplished to be here? You know, but it's what I love to do. It's all I do. But all if people are asking you that question, they obviously feel that looking at you, they believe that you may have lost something. Forget skill for a second. I'm talking about passion. You've got people questioning whether or not the passion to do this is still there for you. Where do you think they get that from? You know, am I the hungry lion I once was? You know, maybe not. It's certainly different, but I'm, I'm, I'm now the fat cat. You know what I mean? I'm the fat cat pulling all the strings around here, and that's an even da more dangerous individual. So, you know, and I'm also, you know, couldn't wait, so I am hungry. So I'm eager to get in there and prove all, all the people uh, you know, all my doubt is wrong and all my support is correct. You know, I do a, lo a lot of this for the fans. I love to, I love to get, in, uh, get in and show my appreciation for the fans. Some people, don't believe, some people believe, however, that you're not as dangerous as you used to be. Yeah, well, they don't feel that way, okay, because, because obviously... You know, you, every time I sit in, in, in an interview, it's, oh, why are you here? You have too much money, you're too successful, you've done it all, blah, blah, blah. You know, in the last fight, I kind of bought into that. You know, I was in the press conference and a guy was reading out a quote of mine from many years ago where I was like, you know, uh, talking about, I can't wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my mother in a mansion, I'm gonna, you know, my girlfriend's gonna have a car for every day of the week, and, you know, I was feeding into that, wow, I did all this, you know, I, I, I'm not even, I'm, I'm where I am, I'm grateful, I'm proud of where I am and what I've achieved, but there's a lot more left in me, I'm still very young, I'm very fresh in the game, and I'm a dangerous man, Steve, and I'm the most dangerous of them all, you know what I mean, this, I have 19 knockouts in my mixed martial arts career, Saturday night I will get my 20th, it'll be my 12th UFC main event, only 32 years of age, fresh, fresh as anything, I'm ready to go, so I'm going to prove how dangerous I am, because trust me, in the mindset I'm in, I'm really, really dangerous, this man is not... It's not gonna be pretty what's gonna to happen to this man in here. Mm. Let's rewind the clock to the press conferences leading up to the sequel between you and Dustin Poirier. People looked at you and said, you were incredibly nice. You were nicer than anybody had ever mm. seen Conor mm. McGregor be yeah, towards that. an opponent. Why was that? You know, I feel almost pity for some, of the, some people in the game, to be honest. I had a little bit of pity for Dustin. You know, he's, he's been around many years, you know, he's, it's not a pretty game for a lot of people in this business. And I just came back and, you know, wanted to be respectful and, you know, give, it, give the Jews and, you know, f that this time, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't reciprocated, it was, it was shady. It's not that I didn't know about it, it's not that I didn't know the intentions, but now, now the intentions are clear and I'm gonna punish him for that. How was it shady? What did he do that made you just say a few shady? things, you know? Just a few things. You're on it's, national it's been, television. Tell us how. What are yeah, those? It's been things? noted throughout the build-up with certain things, with certain discussions we've had, and just, just shady behavior. I'm not in the business of explaining any of it, but no, the man is going to pay for it. When they look at you and they saw a guy, that's that's the excuse in terms of Dustin Poirier, nice guy. You felt bad for him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you, they're looking at you and they're saying. Maybe you were a nice guy because, again, you're thinking about all that you Steven, I am a nice guy. Okay. You know, I am a nice guy. You know what I mean? It's just about not translating it into the game. You can't be nice in this business. That's for sure, no matter what. You know what I mean? You've got to be ruthless in it. I've got to stay ruthless. That's, that's what I've been saying. You know, in, 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 in the most ruthless business of all, I am the most ruthless. And that's, that's what it is. And that's where... Where I am. What happened in the octagon in January? You know, there was a lot of free. There was a lot of freebies given. There was a lot of free things given. There was there was there was weight on the scales given. There were shots in the octagon given. There was plugs and support given. There's nothing free given this time. Everything is getting took, and that's that's the mindset here. Is that why you lost? Uh, yeah, I would say so. There's a, I mean, there's a few things. A tactical. You know, I wasn't like I said. I pitied the man. To be honest with you, I wasn't. I was looking past him. I had a Manny Pacquiao camp in place, and that was three quarters of the camp. So, you know, I've dialed it back in. I've focused on the skills and the tactical errors and things like that, and here we are. You know, it's been full uh, focus on mixed martial arts practice, and I'm ready to go. They look at Conor McGregor right now. 
the novices, not the avid followers who know the sport. They're all novices. The They're but, all novices okay. to me, Steven. I'm talking about fans. I'm okay, talking about fans. Okay, I'm not okay, talking about the fighters, okay. but just the fans. Watching you fight, they've seen you lose to Nurmega Medoff. They saw him wrestle and maul and grapple. They saw you lose to Dustin Poirier, and they said, those calf kicks really hit you. I know what I peeled from it was that, excuse me, that, 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 that leg, that front leg of yours was ready Don't to forget go. he also shot for the legs 20 seconds in. Mm. You know, almost as fast as, as the Dagestani. The, the Dagestani shot for the legs for the takedown 15 seconds into the first round. Dustin was 20 seconds. You know, they know what's what. They can say what they want. They know the danger that they, that they face. Now it's, you know, I understand they fight, they, fight, they fight me afraid. They dive for the legs. They try and stall positions. They shell up. They look to kick the legs. There's, there's things I'm aware of now, and I, I've made adjustments, and I'm, I look forward to, you know, correcting it. I became a fan of this sport in large part for watching somebody like you knock people out. You know, they, they My are, record in mixed martial arts competition is 19 wins and one loss. I only count knockouts. I only count knockouts. Dustin's win is tor Dustin's, Dustin's record is 13 wins, two losses. The only thing that's final in this business is a knockout. All the other the decisions, the tabs, all that shit means nothing to me. I'm coming to take a man's head off. And that's it. You know what I mean? I was, I was aiming to put a few holes in his head the last time. Now I'm going to put a few holes in his head and send it into the bleachers. What about somebody that looks at Conor McGregor and said, excuse me, sir, that just happened to you. What do you say to them about that? Yeah, well, here we go again. I'm back. You know what I mean? So let's go. I look at it and I say to myself, right now, Conor McGregor, you don't want to stand straight up with him still because he'll put you to sleep. He'll knock you out. Mm -hmm. But if you grapple him, if you calf kick him, excuse me, you, you, you mess with his lower extremities, that's hard for him to take. That's not the fight that Conor McGregor wants to, because he fought, he fought Floyd Mayweather. He was talking about fighting Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. He's addicted to the knockout, yeah. addicted to striking. Yeah. If you go away from that, that's how you beat Conor McGregor. To that, yeah. you say what? Yeah, well, just try it now. Try it now. You know what I mean? This is I, I'm opening up the up the targets. I'm opening up opening up the toolbox. You know what I mean? It's just about going into my toolbox. It's it's vast. You know what I mean? My stances, my approaches, my attacks, my shots. So I'm gonna whip out all the weapons here, and, I, and I'm aware of what. You know, that panic shot, the panic in his body. It's, I see it all written all over him. I saw it in the first fight when I sparked him. You know, I even saw it in the, in the second fight. I just was, you know, I just wanted to pat him on the head almost, you know? It was, that's kind of the way I felt with it, but that's gone now. He's gonna, it's, it's on now. I'm interjecting because he actually admitted it was almost like a flash KO. You hit him, you caught him well, in the He sent an round. electric bolt said, through his body multiple him. times. I he said I you caught him, but you didn't follow up. Why not? Because I, here's another thing, because I was trying to get the rounds. I wanted to get rounds in, but then I realized I'm not paid by the fucking hour here. There's none of that going on this time, trust me on that. I sent electric bolts through his entire body, from his head to his toes. You can see him rattled in the octagon in the first round and in the second round he was out on his feet. So he knows it as well as I know it, and that's, it's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a butchering. Let me rewind back and get a little personal with you here about something. I did a little research, doing a little reading, and. I heard that Conor McGregor was once a plumber's apprentice. That's right. And, I'm back on the building and, sites now, Stephen. I'm back right. on the building sites. That's and, my mindset. Yes. I'm, I, I'm Forbes, the, the highest paid athlete on the Forbes list this year. But now, in my mind, I'm back on the sites. I'm back on the building sites with a high vis and a hard hat and a hammer in my hand. I'm asking this question because in doing that research, I read that your parents didn't want you to get into this game. You even got into a fight with your dad. Until you, want, until you told him one day, you're gonna see, I'm gonna be a millionaire. And you told him that and you obviously yeah. accomplished Stephen, that goal. Stephen, when that conversation was going on with my parents, you were in the same boat as my parents. There was no game. It wasn't, I was getting into a game. There was no game. I made this game. I built it up. My father said to me, who, like, at the time I think it was Chuck Liddell and Tito and those guys that were kind of, you know, on. And it was like, how much do they make? Can you make a living out of, out of it? And you couldn't, so I'm just trying to convince I'm gonna make a living out of this. I'm gonna make it a business where you can make it a living. And that's, that was basically it. So, you know, they didn't know what it was, you know. But that's where I'm going. Because you accomplished those goals, yeah. obviously making your family proud. You got a proud, you, 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 you're a proud papa for Connor Jr. All of the stuff that you've accomplished, all the great things that you've achieved in your career. Is it possible that no matter what you say, that you're sitting back knowing that everything's gonna be all right no matter what. That's the fire that people is questioning whether or not that's still there with Conor McGregor yeah. because of that. Yeah. Well, what look, do you say to that? I mean, I'm coming in to kill this man. I'm coming in with 
with vicious intent here. Murder shots. So, you know, what else can I say? That's that's the way it is. I don't care about nothing here. I'm coming to take this man out cold. And, and if you don't do it, it's, what it's does that done. Mean? It's done. It's already done. Okay. So if you do do it, it's done. What does that mean for your future? I in the UFC? Going on to the next one. On to the next one. I, I, I flew in on the jet just now. We saw the Allegiant Stadium, which is a phenomenal looking stadium. Right. I'd like to fight in that at the end of the year. This is what I love to do. Again, I'm born and bred to do this. Like I said, you can go back way in time. My name, my family name, were bred on the battlefield, swinging pickaxes on the back of a horse. You know what I mean? That's where the McGregor name comes from. We come from the Scottish Highlands. Well, warriors, it's all I know. It's all we know. So I'm going to be doing it for a long, long time yet. When you say a long, long time, like you said, you're 32 years of age, how long are we talking? 332, that's, you know what I mean? I'm doing this until the day I go out. Right. You know what I mean? If you, if you look at Tyson, Tyson came back at a phenomenal performance against Roy Jones Jr. And I was, you know, it was great to see Tyson come back like that. It was great to see Roy as well. I thought I was very impressed with the, with the performance. People walk away from the sport. It's not like your physical body lets you down. It's just the mental fatigue of it all. You know what I mean? Tyson said a quote that uh, I was interested in. He, he said, what would Cus say to you if, uh, if he was to... Customato. Custom, what would yes. Customato say to you now, now that you're coming back? He said, what took you so long? And I agree with that. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep going and that's it. You'll never get rid of me. This game, this game is mine. This city, Las Vegas, is mine. This world is mine. Is that... Saturday night, I'm going to show that. And I asked this question because I also read about, and people talk about things like this where, okay, it's the fame and people think about, okay, so I've got fame and I'm comfortable and that might be the reason. Where in fact the reason might be the people that you gotta ward off because everybody wants a piece of you yeah, that, once you're yeah, that champion. Yeah, yeah. Kamaru Usman spoke about being a champion Fuck and how him. tough that he is. He is a bum of a thing. Don't even, don't mind him. You know, don't there mind is, Osman. There, there, yeah, there's no celebrity, there's no fame. That, thing's a, that thing is nada, nothing. Not even on the radar of anything. Fame and celebrity, there's pitfalls for it. But I am no celebrity. People mistake me for a celebrity. I break people's faces for money and bounce. That's what I do. So Saturday night, I'm gonna do it again. Who's next, assuming you beat Dustin? I, I, I would go for that lightweight belt. The lightweight belt, of course. Okay. Oliveira, the, the, yes. the Brazilian. Okay. Then that's we'll it. look to replicate. We'll go back up weight divisions and whatnot. And what about Nate Diaz? A trilogy of course, that's all, that has to happen. That must take place. That fight will take place, of course. I, I, yeah, that fight will take I'm place. I'm thinking about that because, again, I go back to you, Connor. Mm -hmm. The Mega Medoff loss. That's temporary, Lord. Where's he gone, but? Where's he now? He's retired. Yeah, well, boy, he went sprinting. He's gone. Shit, his jocks came fat and Roy and all. He's done nothing in the sport. F all he done in the sport. He is undefeated. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Damn, He's he never lost. He was 13 and 0 fighting guys with uh, three wins and six losses. It was his father's shows. His father had the shows set up and he was fighting bleeding guys with like two, two wins and eight losses and all. That's his record up until he's 20 and 0. He has three fights on the trot in the UFC before that. That, that done him well. And then before that, it's nothing. It's pullouts. Couldn't make weight. You know, that's, that's that. So, now, the last time and we And now spoke, he's gone. Okay. The last time we spoke, you said, Stephen, it's hard to get fights. People are not giving me fights. People are running from me. So I haven't been able to, been act, to be active. And that has a lot to do with some of the struggles that I've had in recent memory. Do you still hold that position that that's the reason why you've been struggling? Of course, uh, yeah, I'm on a nice little path right now. It's more, it's not so much t the opponents. There is a bit of that with the opponents, of course. It's more the behind the scenes, the business aspects and things like that. You know, that's kind of what's halted it a little bit. But like I said, I'm on a great path now. We've got this trilogy. We've got big things planned for after, and I'm excited about it. Do you feel the UFC is in a good place or does the UFC need you? Yeah, no, the UFC is in a great place. I'm very proud to have assisted in that in a major, major way. You know what I mean? Long, you know, I'm here for it. You know, I long you. may I continue. I have a lot of love for the company. I've been here since the Fertitta days, and I'm here in the new age. And you know, I'm very, very honored to be associated with the, with the company. Of course, you know yourself, Stephen. You're sitting here in front of me. You know what I mean? Don't get Stephen A out here unless it's unless it's me. You know what I mean? You know, it's it's big it's big style, and I'm very proud and honored to be to be to be doing it. I appreciate that answer, but I did ask a direct question. Does the UFC in the year 2021 need Conor McGregor? Yeah, forever. The UFC needs me forever. Well, I, you can't I, live forever. 
Yeah, but I am forever. I am forever. My accomplishments are forever. My, my knockouts are forever. My run is forever. You know, my domination of two divisions is forever. And, you know, what's, what's to come is, is going to be more forever. What if the UFC says that's true, but we need you to win? Yeah, well, we need you to win. Course, that's what I'm, that's Saturday night. Saturday night, you're going to see a dominant performance. Have you ever felt pressure? No. In your career, no. the way, are you feeling pressure no, now? No, not at all. Not at all? Not at all. You think, you think the way the last one went, I should be feeling less, or I should be less confident. I'm actually more confident, to be honest with you, how it went. So I don't feel pressure. Why are you more confident? Just the way the last fight went, the, you know, the way I was, the way, the way, you know, it's, it's funny watching the way the man thinks and the way the team, the opposite team thinks. Like, it's, it's going to be nasty in here, Stephen. It's going to be nasty in here on Saturday night. What's the difference between Conor McGregor that won in 2014 to Dustin and the Conor McGregor that lost in 2021? You know, relishing in, I'm accomplished, I've done it all, I'm, you know, I, I, I've got rid of that, you know what I mean? How did you get rid of it? Up here, just told myself, just went back, went back in time, you know what I mean? Not even back in time, just, just, sure, sure I lost. It happened, you know what I mean? I'm at the losing, so that's what, that's just happening naturally, you know what I mean? Sometimes that's, sometimes a defeat is what you need. A defeat is the secret ingredient to success, you know what I mean? So it's at the, it's at the taking it out, it's at the taking those accomplishments out of my belly and I'm hungry to get back. You know what I mean? I'm a fat cat that's hungry and that's a dangerous, dangerous man. When you lost to Nate Diaz, you disappeared for a little while. You didn't want to do press tours or anything like that. You were focused on avenging the loss to him. Yeah. Is that the similar feeling yes. to what you have yeah. with Dustin right now? Mm -hmm. Or is it worse? Yeah, it's more venomous. There's it's more, more venomous? Yeah, it's more venomous for sure. And just why is that? Yeah, just the way it, things have, have went. I don't know. Just, you know, another thing, I've not brought my family with me this time. You know, and that has definitely, there's, it's hard to juggle. It's hard to go face to face and want to tear through a man. And then hold your, your son or your daughter and give them a bottle, uh, you know, and feed them and this type of thing. So I've stayed away from that for, the, for, for this one. And I've actually, I feel, I feel great. I've not, I've not switched roles almost. I've stayed in, the, in, in, in that mode that I need to be in. And, you know, even if I would say like rest days, you know, like on a rest day, when I would have rest day around my family, it's not really a rest day. I'm playing with the kids, I'm busy. It's, my rest days have been true rest days. So then when I go again for my next round of work, I'm energized, I'm refreshed, and it's, you know, it's shown in the, in, in the practice room. Was that your idea, or was it a loved one, someone close to you that suggested that's what you no, needed it's, to do? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's my idea. You know, it's not an idea. It's just it's what, I'm, it's what I'm doing, and that's, that's the way it is. So Saturday night, when this fight is over, what will we walk away saying? about Conor McGregor? The greatest of all time. What a dangerous man. Shouldn't have doubted him. The usual. You feel that you've been doubted? Mm, of course. You Do know? you feel that's been fair? Yes. Yeah, mm, I don't really care about it. I'm just, it's fuel to me. It's fuel to me. Are you going to be in the UFC for a long time to come, or are we going to see you boxing as well? Mm, you know, for sure I'll box again. Like I'm back on the sites, the boxing is, it's not even on the radar at the minute, you know what I mean? But I will do, of, of course. Do you feel, obviously, fighting Floyd Money Mayweather and making the exorbitant amount of dollars that you made and well-deserved, nobody can knock you for making that decision. But Steven, as you reflect Steven, on it, Floyd didn't make me anything. I, I was on the Forbes list before Floyd, you that's know what fair. I mean? Floyd, I, I brought Floyd out of good that with it, you know what I mean? Floyd, he had the Andrew, Andre Berto fight before, that was like 300 Well, I'm not going to knock you for that because Floyd Mayweather said that. He yeah, said you know he, could, I mean? he was, was more than grateful that made to you. Floyd, but he was, it went He was well, more than yeah, grateful to you. He, he told me that personally, he was more than grateful to you, but my last question to you would of be Of course, this. he has a picture of me in the gaff in his house. He does. <laughs> he has fallen a deal. He does. I have no problem with Floyd. I was in. It wasn't a good look for him to, to, to uh, face against that man in, the, in his last Logan one. Paul uh, it didn't, it didn't. It didn't feel right. He, even his art, it didn't, he didn't even feel right. He could see it in him. We can go again if he wants, you know what I mean? It's, I, I feel that's going to happen at some stage down the line. Last question, win by KO or just the win? Saturday night. KO, out on a stretcher, this man is going. Steven, good to Pleasure. meet you, my man. Good, good stuff. All right. Thank you.